We've known for many decades that poverty rates are more than twice as high in the African American community. And this, of course, goes hand in hand with healthcare access barriers, resulting in the very well documented higher diabetes, hypertension, and cancer rates in African Americans compared to white Americans. So it was certainly predictable that we would see the frequency of COVID 19 is disproportionately higher in African Americans, and death rates from COVID 19 are disproportionately higher. In African Americans. Compounding the socio demographics is the fact that African Americans have more exposures. Blacks are highly represented among hospital workers, delivery service uh, industry, um, in public transportation. African Americans are more likely to live in housing environments that uh, cannot support the social distancing policies. There is considerable and, and mounting evidence that shows that there are both genetic and, uh, of course, biological differences when we think about various diseases when we compare Blacks to whites in the U.S. Different types of cancer, heart disease, diabetes, hypertension, obesity, and even genetic diseases like sickle cell anemia. The disparities are real and the differences are real. Our history, our genetic makeup, and the environment. All of those things sort of play a complex role uh, and, and the reasons why we see these differences. It sounds to me that it's a, it's multifactorial, as you yes. both might say. It's yes. a one-two punch. There may yes. be a genetic predisposition towards some of these diseases, and they are exacerbated or yes. fueled by environmental factors. Absolutely. That's the, that's exactly what it is. So you, you have a group of people that are at higher risk of infection, but they also have an underlying biology that might put them at higher risk for a more advanced and aggressive disease course. And in this type of setting where there are, where there still isn't truly effective testing and there definitely isn't any type of therapeutic or treatment, we're in big trouble. Many of the chronic diseases, right, that affect African Americans impact our immune and inflammatory systems. So if you have higher rates of these diseases in a population or community, the consequence of that is that those people will also have issues related to their immune system and their inflammatory systems. So are you saying basically that the immune systems generally of black and brown people are different than the immune systems of other people for genetic reasons? Certain DNA patterns are linked to African ancestry. Other patterns are linked to European ancestry. These genetic patterns of DNA are also linked to other biologic mechanisms, such as immune response to different diseases. And we need to understand these in order to more comprehensively understand cancer pathogenesis. And it's likely also going to be important in understanding the best treatments for COVID. When we think about some of these diseases like cancer and heart disease, diabetes, obesity, we know that all of these things tend to influence an in, in inflammatory response. So our immune system and our inflammatory system goes out of whack. And it's really interesting that one of the key features of COVID-19 aggressiveness is what we call a cytokine storm, where there's this dramatic inflammatory response that leads Where to the tissue. immune system goes into overdrive. It goes into overdrive, and it and the bad thing is that it leads to tissue damage. It leads to all sorts of issues with with our physiology, circulation. All of these things become affected, and really makes our our bodies more susceptible. Centuries of natural selection have made us who we are. And, but what we have to understand is that that selection in one environment is beneficial. In a completely different environment, that same trait can now be detrimental. One example, the Blacks who were put on the ships for the transatlantic slave trade that actually survived the trip, they had to retain water. And the physiology that is associated with that is high blood pressure. That natural selection that occurred has shaped African Americans in such a way that we have higher rates of hypertension. In that setting, it was beneficial. However, 
now being in the setting of being an American, that same trait now is detrimental. And of course, you know, one of the things we know is that one of the primary conduits for uh, the COVID-19 virus to get into cells is the ACE2 or the ACE2 receptor, which is also involved in hypertension. And we know African-Americans have higher rates of, of hypertension. And so the question can become, does that actually provide a better way, right, or in a more efficient way for the virus to actually affect these people? Dr. Newman, can you talk about access to care? Patients of color, and in particular African Americans, have socioeconomic disadvantages, such as poverty, results in a lower likelihood of receiving adequate care. More Blacks are receiving care in the urban public hospitals, safety net hospitals. These hospitals have been disproportionately devastated by the costs of COVID medical care. And so it's become a real vicious cycle in terms of worsening care in populations that have greater needs. We absolutely have to address these underlying social inequalities and socioeconomic issues that we know are playing probably a central role in infection rates and mortality. What I'm concerned about is the lack of effort to really try to ensure we're being inclusive and that the research that is ongoing in COVID-19 will include diverse populations of people. We have to look at the actual value of including these individuals who are at higher risk of infection and worse outcomes because what we learn from them can help improve the lives of everyone.